Although the Boardman Fire Department couldn't make it to the elementary schools due to COVID regulations, they still want to teach fire safety lessons. BSTN caught up with some of the crew to learn how we all can stay safe. So with people being home now, um, this really hammers home a lot of the aspects we always talk about with fire safety. Um, with being home with the parents more often, now is a great time to practice your fire escape plans and make sure you have plans. You know, we talk about it in school when we send kids home and tell them to do it with their parents, but uh, now that they're with their parents all the time, it's perfect. You know, you get home, come up with a plan, practice that plan so you know exactly where you're going to go. Um, with the kids, just making sure that they know their phone number, calling 911, all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, cooking, you know, as long as the parents are there, they can teach them the right ways to do things, and this is the perfect opportunity for it. We're gonna start off right here. This is our fire hose, you know, just like you see uh, in all your books and on TV, you know, that's what we use to get the water to the fire. So we got a whole bunch of different sized hoses for dependent on how big the fire is. Uh, we got a whole bunch of equipment in here for, you know, connecting to the fire hydrants and getting water to the truck. We've got a fire extinguisher, just like you would see in your school. Ours is a little bit bigger and a little bit different, but we got all different kinds of fire extinguishers on our truck as well. We got more hoses here. We use this for if we go into a really tall building, that way we can connect to some of the uh, hoses that are already in place and we can go wherever we need to if we can't get our truck close to the fire. Right here, we call these the jaws of life. You guys have probably heard that before. Essentially what this is, is if you get in a car accident, we can use any of this stuff to get you out if you get stuck. We got a whole bunch of stuff here. Some of them act like big, big pliers, so we can use these to pry stuff apart. And then we have a set that is like a big set of scissors. So if we need to cut anything, we can use that to cut through the car and get anything out that we need to get out of the way. Okay. If we go back here, we've got more hose up top. This is how we get water into the truck. We use that hose to connect to the fire hydrants. This is where we keep all our ladders if we need to get up to the second floor of a building. If you're ever in a fire, we can use those ladders to get up there. Uh, we always tell you guys, if, you, if you're ever stuck in a fire, don't go and hide. Make sure you get to a window, you know, wave your hands, scream and yell. That way we know where you're at and we can come and get you with our ladders. We got a whole bunch of different saws here. We can use those to cut through wood. We can use it to cut through concrete. We can get through walls, through roofs. We use those for a number of different things. That way we can get smoke out of a building or we can gain access to a building if we need to. And we also have some fans here that we can use to kind of push or pull smoke out of a building depending on what we're trying to do. Because we want to make sure that everybody can see and nobody's breathing any of that nasty stuff in. So we want to make sure we get that out of the building. Some different tools here. We've got some axes, some sledgehammers. We can use all that stuff to you know, break through walls or cut through roofs. That way we can get into wherever we need to get into. We got some fire gear here. When we get to the other side of the truck, we'll talk to firefighter Brandon, and he's gonna put that gear on and we'll explain what it does, okay? Right here, more fire extinguishers, just different kinds for different types of fires. You know, we run into all different types of fires, so we gotta use different extinguishers for different things. And then we just got some uh, tools here for, you know, general run of the mill stuff. We respond to a lot of different calls. So if we have to go there to, uh, you know, work on somebody's furnace or, or take care of some gas leak or something like that, we've got different equipment that we can use for that. So all kinds of different tools in our toolbox here that we take with us everywhere we go. All right, so this is firefighter Brandon. He's gonna show you guys putting on the fire gear here. Um, so starting off, you'll notice that we keep our boots inside of our pants. Uh, the reason why we do that is because when we have to respond to an emergency, we have to respond to a fire, we have to get dressed as quickly as we can. So we set everything up to be as fast as we can. So Brandon's gonna take his, his boots off. He's gonna step into his fire boots. And then you'll see how he can just pull them right up. He's got his boots on, everything's set. And then he throws his suspenders up so his pants don't fall down. Next thing he's gonna do, he's got what we call our hood. The hood is designed to kind of protect our necks a little bit and our ears to make sure that those don't burn, okay? So he'll put that on and then he'll slide his coat on over top of it. All right, then firefighter Brandon's gonna put on this special mask. Now, normally when we go into a fire, we have an a air tank on our backs that we can use to breathe with. So he would normally have that on and he would sound a little funny, okay? So if you ever hear somebody in a fire, if a firefighter's coming in to take care of you or try to find you, if you hear that noise, it sounds a little bit scary, don't be afraid, we're there to help. So we never want you guys to run away from us, okay? We're always there to help. All right, and then he's gonna put his helmet on to make sure that everything's protected. We don't want anything to fall on his head. 
And then the last thing he's going to do is he's going to put on his gloves to make sure his hands don't get burned. So as you can tell, everything's covered up. You can see that he's got his hood on so he doesn't burn his ears. His neck's all protected. We make sure that everything's all, all contained inside of that gear. That way we keep all the heat out. And once he's like this, we put the air pack on and we're ready to go. Hi, I'm Lieutenant James Yoakum. This is my partner, Lieutenant Joel Weary from the Borman Fire Department. We're in fire prevention. What we do are inspections, public safety, plan reviews, and different things like that. Normally during fire prevention week, we bring the trailers to the school and you guys get to come out and go through it. But unfortunately this year we can't do that. So we're gonna bring the trailer on video so that you guys can see everything, how it works that way. When you're cooking on the stove, always make sure that the handle is set to the side. Never let it set out in the open where someone could run into it or over another burner where the handle could get too hot. Make sure towels and oven mitts are set to the side as well or on the oven handlebar. You don't want it catching on fire. Now, in your schools, restaurants, stores, you guys have all seen things like this, correct? You know what they are? Fire alarm. It's a pool station that activates the fire alarm, yes. Do you think you guys are allowed to use anything like that? Yes, you are. They're not a toy, so you don't use them if you forgot your homework or you don't want to go take a test today. But if you're in school, you see smoke, you see fire, absolutely use one. They're all labeled on how to use. This one is simple, so it's push in and pull down. So you're going to take your fingers, you're going to push in, you're going to pull it down. If so you see smoke or fire somewhere, go ahead and pull that pool station. So there's your horn strobe going off. So now you let everybody know that there's something going on that we need to get out of the building. All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about if you had a fire in your home, knowing two ways out, having a special meeting spot, your smoke detectors, checking the door for heat and things like that. So does everybody know two ways out of their house? Through a door. Door is always our first choice. Do you know why we take a door first? It's less dangerous. Right. It's the simplest, easiest way. You guys use a door every day to go in and out of your house. What would be another example or a way to get out of your house if your front door was blocked due to a fire? Window. Window. Now, with a window, if you're on the second story, is it safe to jump out of a window? No. No. So, if you're on a second story, you can't get out downstairs. Stay in your room, keep your door closed, go to that window for help. We will come with our ladders and bring you down. If you're on a first floor, you're not that high off the ground, you can climb out that window, right? All right, so do you guys have a special meeting place at home? If something happened, everybody had to get out of the house quick, where everybody goes to one spot to meet. Okay, that's homework. <laughs> you need to have a meeting spot, because if something happened in your house and you all gotta get out, for today, we got a yellow cone out there. That's going to be our meeting spot. So if we had a fire, we got to get out. The whole family goes there. It's easy for mom and dad to say, we're all here. So when we show up, we know we don't have to go search that house for anybody. Now, with smoke, is it good to stand up and smoke or stay low? Stay low. You know why? So you don't breathe it in. Right. Your fresh air is going to be closer to the ground. All that bad stuff's going to be up top. Now, do you guys think your bedroom door is open or closed? Open. All right. Don't want to do that. So, if you're sleeping with your bedroom door open, okay, and we had a fire down there, where's that smoke, heat, and all the flames going to go? Your room. Right. So, if this door is closed, do you think you have a chance of surviving? Yes. Absolutely, you do. So, you do want to make sure you sleep with your bedroom doors closed. Now, when you hear your smoke detector, which we'll set it off here in a minute, do you just open your door and take off? No. no. Right, so you want to feel that door for heat, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So, do you know how we feel a door for heat? Off well, like your shirt, you keep a shirt on, put it on. No. Yeah. Or just touch it. Kind of. Take the back of your hand. Call it like sweeping the door. It's a little more sensitive compared to this side of your hand. You're going to take 
the big sweep on that door, big circle, feel that door for heat. Go ahead, tell me what you find. It's very hot. So, if that door is hot, do you think it's safe to open it? No. Most likely you have a fire outside of there. So if the door was cool, should you just open it and take off running? Uh, no. You want to check first, right? Mm -hmm. So, what you're going to do, is just open that door up a little bit to look down to see if your pathway is clear. So, go ahead and open that up. What do you see? Smoke. All right, so you see smoke. Do you see any type of glow like fire? Yes. So you think it's safe to go that way? No. So now we got to go to our secondary means of egress, which is our um, like meetup point. Our window? Our window, yeah. Yeah. All right, so now we got to escape out our window. So go ahead and stay low as long as you can. Come on over to your window and crawl out. Climb down the ladder and head to your meeting spot. going to talk a little bit about fire extinguishers. You see these all over the place. They're all throughout your schools, most businesses, and everything like that. Your most common extinguisher is an ABC extinguisher. All extinguishers are marked. When your ABC is on here, it shows you what they are. Class A is your normal combustibles, wood, paper, items like that. Class B is for fuels. C is for electrical. All extinguishers like this work the same. It's called PASS, Pull, Aim, Squeeze, and Sweep. Basically what that means is you're going to grab your extinguisher. The bottom here is your handle. Pull the pin. Aim your hose. Squeeze down on the lever and sweep back and forth at the base of the fire. I'm going to have these two guys demonstrate on our extinguisher trainer here to show you how you can put out a fire. Whoever wants to go first. I go first. All right, so basically like I said, you're going to pull, you're going to pull your pin up, you're going to aim. Now once that lights up and you hear it beep, you can start attacking the fire. You'll see a green circle, you guys don't wait for this, you get to the fire. We would like to thank the Borman Fire Department for their education, services, and extra precaution during this time.